Well, happy Thanksgiving. No, it's not quite Thanksgiving, but it will be before we know it. And have you ever had God drop a word into your mind that you hadn't heard in some time? One of those words that you kind of scratch your head about because you're sure it came from God, but you don't know why. A lot of times we don't know why God's talking to us. But when I, this happens, I've really learned to pay attention. So seven years ago, I I I keep pretty good journals. <laughs> I was reading through my journal the other day, and several years ago, God gave me the word efficacy. Efficacy. Now, I'd heard that word, but I really had never thought about what it meant or how it applied to me or you or my journey with God or anything like that. Yeah, I have to understand just a bit about my morning quiet time first, because this relates to it. I think that'll kind of help you understand why this word stood out like a neon light to me. So I am admitted, an admitted recovering overachiever, amongst other things. However, however, at the end of a crazy, fun, but intensely busy year back when I was doing a lot of traveling. I got hit with what my doctor described as adrenal fatigue syndrome, stage three, which is the highest stage. And at that time, I was pretty much on the go, nonstop traveling, most every weekend speaking or doing something. I was also writing blogs and books. I was running a couple of online coaching groups and managing a business that we had to, at the time taking care of mentally challenged young women. Now, to say my life was busy, that was an understatement. That, wasn't, that was not just the tip of the iceberg about what I was doing. And I would work late most evenings to get it all done, but I really loved what I was doing. So one day, just out of the blue, my brain stopped working and I really need that thing. I really do. It wouldn't think anymore. You know, I couldn't work no matter what I did. It would stop working, oh, I don't know, around 4 p.m. in the evening. This was very disconcerting to me. I had so much to get done and I was able to get in a visit to my doctor before my husband and I flew to Tampa for a TV interview. My doctor had told me before we left that if this, whatever was going on with me, was what she thought it was, I was going to have to slow way down. Slow down. I never liked those words. I always wanted to be constantly productive. It's the bane of existence for a Enneagram 3, which describes me to a T. As an achiever, the bad thing about that moniker is that sometimes we don't know when to stop and gasp, slow down, right? We become overachievers, which really means we're reaching beyond the limits of our humanity. I'm going to tell you that never works. We're trying to be something we are not. We are not God, right? When we came back from Florida, the verdict was in. I had adrenal fatigue in an advanced stage. And the thing about adrenal fatigue is the protocol tells you to eat like I was eating, sugar-free, gluten-free, focusing on protein, veggies, and fruit, exercising daily. I was doing all the right things. But my stress hormones were elevated and my body needed rest. So during this particular time frame, my full-time staff who were taking care of the developmentally disabled young women who were living in our home was leaving to pursue her teaching career. Now, this was something I really encouraged her to do because I know she would make a great teacher. But I also knew it meant I would have to be doing even more with the women who were in our house. In January of that next year, I started driving the morning and the evening run 
to take them to work at the shelter workshop, then pick them up, bring them home. Now, this was about an hour round trip, morning and evening. So I started listening to podcasts about emotional and spiritual burnout, since that's kind of what adrenal fatigue is, because that's where I was, right? That's exactly where I was. And I came upon Ruth Haley Barton's podcast, Strengthening the Soul of Your Leadership, and her book, Invitation to Silence and Solitude. So listening to her helped me understand more about what was missing from my life and my quiet time. I needed a real quiet time with God. That's where we get that word, right? That's where, where that moniker fits what Ruth was doing. It didn't fit what I was doing. It had to be one where I didn't talk, but I just listened to what God wanted to tell me. Let me tell you, that's hard. It is hard, but it's very, very beneficial. My time with God had become more of a marathon. I had to get through each day, Bible reading check, devotional check, tell God what I needed him to do for me, check. Tell him to help me get my to-do list done, check. Do the to-do list, all of it, check. It was a rush through to just get it done, get the quiet time done, check. Even my Bible reading was not about what God was saying to me. It was more about what I could share in a blog or a book. It had become less personal and more work-centered something to get done. Listening to Ruth, I finally understood what was missing from my life. I needed to totally quiet myself in God's presence. I had to undo all of my expectations of reading so many chapters and just actually spend time with God. And you know what that means? I had to slow down. That's something I dislike. But why not slow down when we're spending time with God? So Barton, in uh, her book, uh, Invitation to Silence and Solitude, shares how to actually do this, how to get started and how to continue it. If she hadn't, and if I hadn't read it, I don't know where I'd be today. She is a former pastor who quit the ministry after a time of burnout. She learned the hard way how to really connect with God and not just try to get something from God. During this time of traveling two hours a day that I had, there was plenty of time to listen to all of these podcasts and audiobooks. They were all pointing me towards finding a real quiet place in God's presence. It was exactly what I needed. I learned to have a designated space outside of my work area to have my quiet time in. It needed to be a place that was quiet, dark, and relaxing. She invited us to close our eyes and relax every part of my body. So I learned how to do that in second grade. <laughs> After gym class, I'd have us lay on the floor and, you know, relax your toes, relax your legs, you know, all the way up. Anyway, so I... I actually learned something from grade school and I took that back and I started doing that again. And then she said to empty our minds of all of the to-do lists. I like to-do lists, by the way, because I'd like to get things done. But anyway, empty our minds of all the to-do lists and the problems that we felt we, this thing right here, had to solve. This is when I learned the deeper meaning of surrender. This is when I learned I am not effective when I think I have to do it all. God did not equip me or you to do everything. He is my source. He is your source. We aren't the source. Psalm 62, 11, God said to me once and for all, all the strength and power you need flows from me from God. That, vor that verse really had a profound impact on me. I thought I was supposed to be strong and do it all, but I learned he wanted me 
to rely completely on his strength, to surrender everything to him, surrender everything I think I need to do but can't do to God. That's when I realized when God called me to write books, coach, and speak, it was not because he thought I had everything I needed to do what he wanted me to do. It was because I didn't have anything I needed but I had God, and he told me that with him, nothing will be impossible. And that says it, that's from Luke one thirty seven, New King James. With him, nothing shall be impossible. And it felt like at that moment in time that with me, everything was impossible. You know, I realized this also meant I needed to trust God to get things done instead of myself. This had been a big part of my problem. It was why I had adrenal fatigue, because I didn't trust anyone else to get things done but me. It's why I couldn't rest and why I was just burned out. I was not doing what God tells us to do in Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. And I like it in the message. So first few verses says, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure it everything out on your own. That was my main problem right there. I thought God gave the task to me, so I had to figure it out. But the next verse tells us how long I, wrong I was. Listen for God's voice in everything you do and everywhere you go. He's the one. He's the one, my friends, that will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it. Oh my gosh, I need that pounded into my head. Run to God, run from evil. You know, last week we talked about one of the reasons we surrendered to God is because he has the plan and the playbook. He knows the future, so why would we try to do it our way when God knows exactly what should be done, right? What I love about surrender, even though it may seem hard to give up control, God tells us if we trust him completely, then your body will glow with health. Your very bones will vibrate with life. I wanted that bones vibrating thing. I still do. I began to surrender my problems and issues and lists and to-dos that I always thought I had to solve. I handed them to God. And then after I did that, I simply said to God, here I am, Lord, what do you want me to know today? And that's still how I start my quiet time because it really doesn't matter what I need. It matters what God wants me to know. Emptying my mind was one of the hardest things for me, but eventually I began to just picture a blue sky with fluffy white clouds. And as each problem or issue entered my mind, I sent it away on a cloud. And I asked God to bring it back to me with a solution if I needed to do anything. If not, then I wouldn't be concerned with it anymore. And it would be off of my to-do list. And as I began to do that, I would breathe in God's presence and breathe out the anxiety and frustration in dealing with these unsolvable issues. I mean, if God hadn't fixed them already, why did I think I had to? Now, I couldn't even stay quiet for 10 minutes and focus on God when I began that process. But slowly, I managed to be quiet for more time and focus on Him. Now, I think it's about seven years later, it's easy for me to spend an hour or more in his presence and even want more. It's in his presence that he shares things with me that at the time may not seem consequential, like picturing Jesus taking my hand and we cross over a creek and walk up a hill. Sometimes we climb down a rocky ravine and he helps me. Sometimes we float in the water. During these times, my mind 
is at ease. I'm not planning the next thing I'm going to do. I'm just in this space and time with him, and it rejuvenates me. I do usually set a timer if I have an appointment following, but if I don't have something I have to do, I just love to stay in his presence until I sense the time is up. The best thing about this is when I finish, I don't know how, it's a God thing. I know exactly what I need to do next, even though I haven't, we haven't, you know, talked about anything about my to-do list. Even the issues and problems I had prior to coming into the quiet time feel resolved. I didn't talk to him about them. I just handed them to him. During that quiet time recently, when, I don't know, I, let's call it a benediction on our time, God said to me, may your day be filled with efficacy, efficacy. He does this kind of thing to me a lot, and it's one of the great benefits of a real quiet time. It's a time when, you know, I put my mind at ease and rest and just focus on who God is, what he's doing, and what, if anything, he's saying to me. My mind is open to new thoughts and feelings and understanding. And I said, efficacy? Why are you giving me this word right now? He was quiet, so I sensed that he wanted me to research it or look it up, see its meaning. It means the ability to produce a desire or intended result. It also means to produce effectiveness. This doesn't just mean to be effective, but to be able to to produce effectiveness on an ongoing basis. So I ask him, what in my life has efficacy? What in my life can I count on to produce effectiveness on a regular basis? To be always powerful, influential, active, potent, capable, vigorous, a force, competent, virtuous. And the answer came back, clear as a bell. Anything I trust God to take care of, I know will be done through the efficacy of God. Anything I allow the Holy Spirit to control instead of myself will be done and will not need to be checked or redone. When we surrender to God and allow Him to guide us, whatever we do will produce the desired result, and go on producing an effective result. That's efficacy. And when we feel like God has told us to do something or even called us or anointed us for a specific job or task, and we want to be effective in that, we will turn to what we know has been efficacy for us in order to get the job done. What I've learned is spending real quiet time with God is effective in every way to start my day and get things done. The deeper key to efficacy or producing the desired result begins with focusing first on God. I am never the best at anything I do if I am trying to do everything in my own strength. I might as well have been watching TV or taking a nap, whatever. I have to have God's strength to do anything. When I sit down to write, my cry is, Lord, I need your anointing. Sufficient to the task is your anointing. Without it, I'm toast. Without it, I'm like the words of the old song that I love. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. His strength is the main ingredient ingredient that helps me write anything worth reading or saying or talking about. I don't think I understood that several years ago. Not like I do today. I'm humbled and honored when someone comes up to me and thanks me for writing one of my 10 books or remembers something I said on one of my podcasts or in one of my courses. It helps me see that the things God has called me to do are producing the desired results. Their efficacy, efficacy. I can't say that particular word very well, but anyway, you get the idea. 
but only when I rely on God's strength and get that task done, that's the only way it gets done. It's not only his strength, it's also learning how to step into his rest. I think that's even more important than his strength. I know now that both God's strength and his reminders to me that I am human and need to rest can be the dynamic duo power in my life. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 in the message says it this way. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Not like a forced quiet time, right? Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Now, of course, my goal is to help people connect better to God. Earth is this testing ground, a place for us to grow in spirit and truth. When days are hard, and most of 2023 has been hard for me, I'll be honest. We need Jesus. We do. I've been dealing a lot with getting a fourth, count on four, and I'm not even a horse, knee replacement, which will be happening on December 20th. So we're in the process of also opening a new home for Overcomers Academy, my coaching group. We're moving from Facebook because everybody's asked me to move from Facebook. So we're doing it to the circle community. It's been difficult to figure out what's going to work best and get it implemented. But once we decided to move, God has been like the wind at our back, just urging us forward. Why? Because he cares about each one of us, you included. He especially cares about our health. He loves us no matter what we look like, but it's all about Jesus. It's all about taking care of our temple, which is this fleshly body, and it is the body that God gave us. So 1 Corinthians six nineteen through 20 in the Passion Translation tells us, have you forgotten that your body is now the sacred temple of the spirit of holiness who lives in you? And of course, that's Jesus, right? You don't belong to yourself anymore. For the gift of God, the Holy Spirit, well, the Holy Spirit is, you know, we accept Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the, the spirit that lives inside us. The Holy Spirit lives inside your sanctuary. You were God's expensive purchase, paid for with tears of blood. So by all means, then use your body to bring glory to God. And the biggest way we can do this is to pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is saying to us and leading us to do. We can do those things because he is always with us. And in Overcomers Academy, we work on the entire person, body, soul, and spirit by relying on the Holy Spirit to lead us. Jesus said before he was crucified, the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That's John 14, 26 through 27 in the King James. Just because I love the Comforter and the Holy Ghost words in that particular translation. Now, I've learned a lot in the last, I don't know, 10 years. And I think the biggest thing is that we are not effective without tuning into God's station and listening to his Holy Spirit. His word is one place we can also go to find effective ways to live in this world. And here are a few effective methods from God's word. First of all, God's comfort upholds us. That's 2 Corinthians 1, 6. 
if troubles weigh us down, that just means that we will receive even more comfort to pass on to you for your deliverance, for the comfort pouring into us empowers us to bring comfort to you. And with this comfort upholding you, you can endure victoriously the same suffering that we experience. The second one, God's word infuses us with energy. I like that. Hebrews 4.12, for we have the living word of God, which is full of energy, like a two-mouthed sword. It will even penetrate to the very core of our being where soul and spirit, bone and marrow meet. It interprets and reveals the true thoughts and secret motives of our hearts. Hebrews 4.12, I said that, I think. Okay, third one, God's gifts are effective to build up the body of believers. So for his body has been formed in his image and is closely joined together and constantly connected as one. And every member has been given divine gifts to contribute to the growth of all. And as these gifts operate effectively throughout the whole body, we are built up and made perfect in love. That's Ephesians 4.16. And then the fourth one, God's promises are effective. This is Hebrews 10.23. So now wrap your heart tightly around the hope that lives within us, knowing that God always keeps his promise. And of course, we should always be thankful to God, but it's even more on our minds this Thanksgiving season, I think. We need to thank him for all the things he does for us. So let's pray Psalm 28, 7. And that's in the New Living Translation. We'll pray it in this way, okay? So let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for being my strength and shield. Thank you that I can trust you with all my heart. Thank you, Lord, that you help me when I cry out. Thank you, Lord, that you fill me with joy continually. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving to you. Because you are great and mighty. I worship you and you alone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Right now, the doors to Overcomers Academy are closed. But we do hope to have them open soon. So you can join us in the circle community. What I love is that it will be a one-stop area where you can go through my courses Right now, we've got over 100 lessons that will be dripped out once a week, so you can really absorb them. There'll be a live room, which is kind of like a Zoom, where where we can have our group video calls. There's areas for comments and discussions and questions and posts. And I think my podcast videos, are a lot of those are going to be in there, or at least they're going to be added as we go along. So I really do want you to go and sign up on the wait list so that you will know when the doors open and you can get in with us, okay? At TeresaShillsParker.com backslash overcomer. Happy Thanksgiving. Until next week, sweet grace for your journey.